Hey Valley Metal, tonight we're going to work on solving word problems that involve fractions and mixed numbers. But first, let's get to the trivia question of the day. What is the Terracotta Army? What is the Terracotta Army? I saw it at the Minneapolis Institute of Art a couple of years ago, if that helps. All right, let's get to the uh, official target of the day, which is 5.5c. I can solve real world problems by multiplying, by multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. Let's do this thing. Uh, Mrs. Crothers is making a poster to take to her favorite band's concert. The poster she has to decorate is two and a half feet by four and four fifths feet. What is the area of the poster? Actually, here's a picture of Miss Crothers at her favorite concert. You see it's Barney Live. She's on stage, actually. This is a, just a really important moment in her life. But back to reality here. How do you solve this? We're trying to find the area of this. Well, let's just go ahead and set it up. We have two and a half feet by four and four fifths feet. All right, so first thing you have to do, remember my uh, bottom lines, make your mixed numbers into improper fractions. So two times two is four, plus one is five halves. So I rewrote that fraction. Four times five is 20, plus the four on top makes 24 fifths. And I rewrote that one. All right, now just stay neat and organized here. I reduce these fractions because I can divide both 24 and 2 by 2, so that goes, 2 goes into 2 1 time, 2 goes into 24 12 times. Now to notice how I rewrote it again, so I continue to work in an organized fashion. So now I have 5 over 1, and I rewrote it, by 12 over 5. Now multiply straight across, you get 5 times 12 is 60, 1 times 5 is 5, 60 divided by 5 is 12 feet squared. And that's it. That's how you solve a word problem. Very similar to yesterday's lesson, but I'm really going to focus in this lesson on staying neat and organized. And a couple other little pointers right here. All right, just a quick review. Mixed numbers, a whole number with a fraction. Improper fraction, those are those top heavy fractions where the numerator is larger than the denominator, like 7 over 2. Also, my multiplying fraction bottom lines we had yesterday. Turn mixed numbers into an improper fraction. That's number uno. Number two, multiply straight across. Number three, reduce and rewrite. I add two to this list when you're looking at word problems. Number four, does your answer make sense? 12 square feet, yeah, that made sense. If I would have come up with 1,200 square feet or 120 square feet, that wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. All right. Finally, did you answer the question? The question in that first example said, how many square feet? Go back and look at the problem. Are you answering the question? Are you labeling your answer? These are important steps four and five in our little multiplying fractions bottom line checklist. A uh, quick review, how to change a mixed number into an improper fraction. I did this last night. I want to do it again. Here we have two and two six as a mixed number. Two times six is 12, plus the two on top makes 14 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 2, 14. I wrote down there as well. Okay? Let's roll and try a couple of problems here, then I'll have you try two on your own. Last week, Jing Wei spent 1 and 3 eighths hours watching television. Ibrahim watched television for 1 fifth as many hours as Jing Wei did. How many hours did Ibrahim spend watching television? Make sure to simplify your answer and write as a proper fraction. All right, let's get down to the basics here. What do we know? We know that Jing Wei watched one and three eighths of an hour, and Ibrahim watched one fifth as many hours. So we're going to multiply one and three eighths times one fifth. Well, this number is okay, but this dude here is a mixed number. We got to switch that into an improper fraction. So one times eight is eight plus three is eleven. So I rewrote that eleven eighths times one fifth. Now, if you look here, there's no way to reduce any of those fractions by any, you know. Uh, I can't divide anything out, either in the numerator or the denominator, or looking diagonally, I can't reduce either. So just multiply straight across. 11 times 1 is 11. 8 times 5 is 40. 11 fortieths. Does this make sense? Yeah, it seems right. Does it answer the question? No, it doesn't. The question asks, how many hours did Ibrahim spend watching television? So we need to make sure that we add a label to our answer. Ooh. What's going on here? Here we go. To make sure that we have completely answered our question. All right? I bet you I got you on some of you on that one. All right, take a look at another example here. 
Uh, Shannon operates an orange juice stand. On Monday, she used six and one tenth bags of oranges. On Tuesday, she used one third as many oranges as on Monday. How many bags of oranges did Shannon use on Tuesday? Again, we have to simplify our answer, right, as a proper fraction or as a whole number or a mixed number. So, bottom lines right here. It's six and one tenth times one third. Well, one third is okay. This dude here, this mixed number, got to change him into uh, improper fraction. So 6 times 10 is 60, plus 1 is 61 tenths. So I'm going to rewrite that. 61 tenths times 1 third. Let's see, can I do any division here? I really can't divide anything out. So just multiply straight across. 60 times 1 is 61. 10 times 3 is 30. So I'll come up with my answer, 61 thirtieths. But I got to express it in simplest form. So now I got to go back to a mixed number. So I had 61 thirtieths. I know that 30 of them would make a whole. So I subtracted 30 thirtieths here. And then I subtracted 30 thirtieths again. So now I've got 61 minus 60, leaving me only 1 thirtieth left. And here's my two holes. Here's my one hole, two holes, and I've shown it as a mixed number. Two and 1 thirtieth. Does that answer make sense? Two and one thirtieth, she used six and one tenth on Monday. A third as many on Tuesday. Yeah, that makes sense. Does it answer the question, two and one thirtieth? No. Once again, you need that label. You need to make sure that you are answering the question. I'm sorry, folks. I can't grab that one for some reason. All right? So it would be two and one thirtieth bags. But I can do this. Ha, ta-da. All right, let's move on. Trying for you to try a couple on your own. Um, Raja's class collected seven and two thirds pounds of food for the food drive. Marissa's class collected eight times as much food as Raja's class. How many pounds of food did Marissa's class collect? Simplify your answer, write as a proper fraction or as a mixed number. Go ahead and give this a shot. Pause it. All right, let's see how you did. Um, well, you had to multiply eight times seven and two thirds. Uh, you have to write 8 as an improper fraction. You put 8 over 1. Here they're showing you how to change 7 and 2 thirds into an improper fraction. So 7 times 3 is 21, plus 2 is 23 thirds. So now you've got it rewritten here. You've got 8 over 1 times 23 thirds. Multiply straight across, 184 thirds. If you divide that out, 61 and 1 third. But that's not the answer, is it? Here's the answer in the oval. 61 and one-third pounds of food that Marissa's class collected. Make sure you answer the question. All right, last question before the ticket. Crystal and Jillian made a bowl of punch. Jillian used seven and one-fifth times as much lemonade as Crystal did. If Crystal used four-fifths of a cup of lemonade, how many cups of lemonade did Jillian use? Hmm. Simplify your answer. Write as a proper fraction or as a whole or mixed number. Go ahead and pause it and try this. Okay, I'm back. Let's just see. Seven and one fifth times four fifths cup of lemonade. So here we go. Here's what we have to do. This one's okay. This one we're gonna have to switch. So seven times five is thirty-five plus one will give us thirty-six fifths, and they showed you how they did it. So we've got thirty-six fifths times four fifths. Thirty-six times four is one hundred forty-four. Five times five, of course, is twenty-five. Reduce that bad boy down. You've got 5 and 19 25ths. But the answer, Jillian used 5 and 19 25ths cups of lemonade. All right, you ready for the ticket? I think you are. Here we go. On Wednesday, the farmers at the Adams Farm picked 5 and 3 quarter barrels of tomatoes. Thursday, the farmers picked 3 tenths as many tomatoes as on Wednesday. How many barrels did the farmers pick on Thursday? I'll pause for a second so you can freeze it. Okay, go ahead, write that, uh, just one problem for the ticket, solve that bad boy, bring it to class. All right, the question was, what is the terracotta army? Well, it's actually really cool. Um, it's these little clay warriors, they're about four or five feet tall. Uh, and there's this Chinese emperor uh, in 246 BC, he was only 13 years old, King Xing Huang. Uh, he became the first emperor of all of China and he began this work for his mausoleum he wanted to be buried with all of these this army of guys so that they would protect him 
And so here it shows some of the pits that they, how they dug these guys out and they found them just the way they were buried. Of course, they went and cleaned it up. But altogether, there was over 7,000 soldiers, horses, chariots, and weapons that they've been under uh, from these pits. So anyway, pretty cool. Uh, terracotta, uh, if you think about it in terms of Latin, it means uh, earth baked or something baked from the earth. And these were, you know, clay pottery type soldiers. So that's why they call them the Terracotta Army. All right, little trivia. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed. See you tomorrow.